Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sparkle on Substack with me, Claire Venus. I am so excited to talk to you about everything that's been happening. It's just been the most bonkers couple of months on Substack. And I feel like I've got so much to share about joy, about growth, about fathoming out the platform around holding space for community. So I thought I'd just do a bit of a catch up episode with you. Um, I've got some great ep um, guest episodes lined up and coming out. Um, and I can't wait to share those, but I just thought it would be really interesting to share where I've got to and how that's all been feeling. So I will level with you. I've had like a really funny week. So funny is in strange, not funny as in ha ha. Um, yeah, I mean, it's always good to have more laughs in life, isn't it? But no, this has been a funny, strange week. So I am... Um, hit a milestone on Sparkle on Substack. So I um, got a lovely email from the team at Substack to say that I'd hit a thousand subscribers, which was amazing. You know, I've only been growing the space a really short time. People have been so generous and warm and I've made some great friends via the platform people I've never met in real life. I've made some great colleagues that I really respect and admire. I just feel like it was a really beautiful milestone to hit and it felt really, really good um, to do that. Because I've been spending a lot of time on Substack and not on any other social media, I've just been kind of pouring my heart and soul into how I want to set up my Substack spaces. So it was one of those where I knew it was coming, like it wasn't a surprise. I've, I checked the statistics a lot. I could see how my account was growing. I could see how how much it was being shared I could see what was working in terms of growth for my publication so it was like a nice moment and I was reflecting on when I got to a thousand subscribers on creatively conscious and I had a completely different feeling to that so I felt like people were just going to start unsubscribing I thought I was going to hit a thousand subscribers and then people would just start dropping off change their mind not want to be there um, I just expected everything to go down so much so that I didn't check statistics after I hit the thousand over there for ages. I was like, OK, it's fine. And I've done a lot of work on growth and what growth is and what it means to be holding spaces for community since then. Substack is such an interesting place because it is a hybrid place. We are reaching people in their email inbox. And my statistics are about 60 percent are reading in the email inbox and then about, yeah, about 40% in the Substack app. So some people are using it as an alternative to social media. That's definitely what I do. And I read everything in the app. I don't read anything in my email inbox. Um, and yeah, it feels like a really interesting pivotal point to reflect on how I felt before to how I felt now. And to be really honest, like the getting a thousand on Creatively Conscious felt like it just it seemed to just take so long and I was so invested in like, this will feel amazing when I get there. And then it felt terrifying. And on Sparkle, it was like, mm, okay, just another day. Not that I don't appreciate all the people that have come to read my publication and come to spend time with me, but it just didn't have the same weight. And it was just a really interesting set of feelings. I really debated about where to share it, if to share it, how to share it. And I decided to share it on my Instagram bizarrely and uh this is bizarre because I just think Instagram is a bizarre platform it got over 100 likes on Instagram which is a lot for me um and I didn't share it with any intention of anything other than to say thank you to the people that have supported my journey so that was why it's been a strange week I just think it's just reminded me that social media does celebrate success. Like it's about that, isn't it? People like that. Like they really actually like to press the like button for success. And sometimes it can feel a bit quieter in the background. But yeah, over on Substack, it's been, it's just been a wild ride to get here. So that is a thousand subscribers since the middle of July. I feel like it's the middle of July. So yeah, so where are we now? August, September, October. So yeah, three months, three months and a thousand subscribers, which is incredible. And it is because I came to Sparkle with a strategy of what I wanted to set up. I set up paid membership from the off. I knew what I wanted to write about. I knew I wanted to host a podcast there. I knew exactly what I wanted to teach and how that was all going to pan out for at least a year. So I came to it with a big strategy that I'd already figured out beforehand. And so that's why that growth has been possible for me 
And it's been really, really brilliant to have people to share that growth with. Um, then later on, like within 24 hours, Substack emailed me and told me that I was a Substack bestseller. And now Substack have this check mark system. If you get over 100 paid subscribers, over 1,000 paid subscribers, or tens of thousands of paid subscribers, then you get a different, a slightly different check mark for each. So I think it's like orange, white, and then maybe purple. For the last year, tens of thousands of paid subscribers, which just seems wild, doesn't it? And I want to just um, sit with that for a second, like what that means. So obviously, Substack use the terminology of seller. So sales, like I have sold subscriptions, I have sold this number of subscriptions. It means active subscriptions, right? So it means people that are currently active and paying per month, but it also means people that are on coupons. So people that have joined up um, for like free month trials or on friend memberships or whatever. It doesn't take into consideration comps. So anytime you comp anyone, it will not take that into consideration. So it's everyone across my two platforms that is paying or has a coupon attached to their subscriber. And yeah, I think that when I went on the app and I saw that there was this tick next to my name, I had that same feeling like, oh, it's a mistake. Like people will leave, like it'll all fall down and I won't be able to maintain that. Like I had all of these wild feelings bubbling up. I didn't expect to get this check mark. I just, I was working towards it for sure, but I was enjoying the joyful path of that. I was having a really, really lovely time. And yeah, to sort of get that and see that and have that reflected back that now when I write a note in the Substack app, it says Claire Venus and then there's a little tick after my name, just feels epic. Like it just feels like at the beginning, that wasn't even something that I would have dared dream of. Like that just feels like such a big thing to have happened in my Substack journey. And this is why I'm being really, really honest because you know that I'm all about holding space for you to grow in a joyful and sustainable way. And part of what's sustainable for me is that slower growth, is that kind of test and adjust, try things out, see how it feels, see how it works. And there are a lot of surprises in that, both good and bad, mostly good, if I'm honest. So yeah, so in in sort of achieving this bestseller status, I just felt stunned, you know? I was like, what do I do with this information? Like, do I share it? Do I celebrate it? Like, who do I celebrate it with? I told a couple of um, friends and colleagues, obviously told my husband, it felt so much more celebratory than the getting a thousand subscribers did because I'm at a different stage in my journey and I was really working towards that goal of, what that would feel like not only for social proof that people are buying into my work and I would hope that other people want to do the same but also because I've put so much energy and time and care into the work that I deliver and I deliver a lot still for free I deliver workshops behind the scenes that I absolutely love um and I love holding space for people. So yeah, it was just like one of those where I'm like, okay, like how am I going to share this and what's this going to be about? And that's why I thought the best way is just to do this podcast style, tell you about how I've been feeling, be really honest um, so that you can listen to, like maybe you've got a goal around a set number of paid subscriptions. Maybe you've got a goal around bestseller. Maybe that goal exists within a two-year framework, a five-year framework. Like we've all got our individual goals, haven't we? And I think that with numbers and metrics, it can just be super curious as to how that makes us feel, both in the way that other people accumulate numbers on social media and subscribers on Substack, but also within the responsibility that we're called to in our own showing up. So if we want to write a post and we were quite comfortable with our small mailing list and then suddenly we'll have a post go viral and there's more and more people that are signed up there, you know, there's that bit of a uh, period where we're reconsidering the whole thing, aren't we? And we're kind of spending time with new people that are coming into our world. Um, and it doesn't have to be that deep, you know, we can show up, we can write things, we can move on with our day. And there's definitely that bit of crafting for me in terms of what I feel comfortable sharing and um, both in front of and behind a paywall. And that's been a really incredible journey this last 18 months or so to work out what parts of my authentic voice and what parts of my personality I'm really comfortable with sharing 
in front of a paywall and um, behind a paywall. I think that's been a really, really interesting thing to fathom out as a creative. And I've done lots of work around how much I give to people, um, both as a free subscriber and as a paid subscriber and how that all works and how that all feels. Um, I've pulled back from doing one-to-one -one work, which was a real breakthrough out of my own one-to-one -one with Sarah Faye. I've got her coming on the podcast um, when I release a new one. And it was a real moment of, oh, okay, like this is what I'm doing now. Like I'm just spending time serving people in this group and this kind of community rather than showing up on one-to-one -one calls and doing things that way. And it won't be forever. I think I might pick them up again in May next year, but I'll see. I just want to give myself space to show up in this community. Um, so yes, so no one-to-one -one calls, only group showing up. And that has been a business decision, right? So Substack has enabled me to make that business decision and know how this fits within my business. And that's been really, really interesting. I'm just going to share my screen with you a little bit um, because, you know, I love to give you that extra bit of value. So I will do that in the call um, and show you how it works um, when Substack give you this little bestseller badge. So this is my Substack profile here. Um, I don't have a problem with showing how many subscribers are subscribed to me as a writer I really don't have an issue with it but you can hide that if you want to hide it if you do try and hide it people can click it and just see like a whole host of names so I just think oh I may as well just leave it on there it really doesn't matter to me and so now I've got this little orange tick with a white background after my name so that indicates that I've got 100 over 100 paid subscribers um and hopefully I'll be able to hold those people and more people might want to come into the community. But like this is a real unknown for me as well, you know, so sometimes we like hit a goal, don't we? And then it's like what happens after that? Like, I don't know, you know, hopefully that all works out and things can continue to grow. I'll keep doing what I'm doing and it's all working well. But you just never know, do you? So I'm very, very grateful for that existing. I have taken a screenshot of it in case it does disappear. Um, I guess part of why I feel like that as well is because life has had other plans for me over the last three years. I had a really difficult postpartum period with my daughter. There was a lot of healing that had to go on. My husband was very, very sick and has been very, very sick for three years. So in terms of the energy that I've had to bring to the table for work, you know, it's been more measured. It's been more catalytic. It's been more self-seeded. It's been slower and it's been... Um, a place where I've really enjoyed figuring out what is a really good use of my time. So yeah, so part of that is that kind of, yeah, holding that space for myself that um, I don't need to kind of do anything bonkers mad to try and keep up with myself. Like I can just carry on on this beautiful journey that I've got on Substack. So I've got my two publications here and I've talked about this before, but I have prioritized Sparkle on Substack in the launch period. So to me, the launch period was from when I launched in July and it'll be until the end of the year and then I might mix things up again and I might put creatively conscious back here I am still getting subscribes to creatively conscious but less subscribes than I was getting because it's not my primary publication so when people are clicking through if I've done a note or the found my profile this is the first one that they see and if they are interested in growing on Substack and staying creative on the platform then they read that and then they think right great yes I'll um I'll subscribe to Claire I'll um I'll join a community so that really feels a really nice thing to have um those two publications there um yeah so while we're talking about growth I just thought I would share another couple of things with you just bear with me a second and I'll um get those up for you so we can see so it's really interesting with Substack around statistics and how we figure things out. I was just chatting on my Sparkle call with a community member who was asking specifically about um, growth of a particular post. And when we checked out the statistics for it, um, just finding the right one. When we checked out the statistics for it, um, it was obvious that actually it must have been shared on the explore page. So if you guys don't know about the explore page on Substack yet, I was just going to share a little bit about that with you. So let me reshare my screen. 
There we go. Okay, so we were just talking about, I was sharing this post here and I was saying that we can see some really interesting things around growth here. We can see where new subscriptions have come in. We can see total views. We can see how many people have opened the emails. It's had 420 opens, that one, 44%. And we can also see what people have clicked and then where they're reading in either the email of Substack app or on the Substack website. And then that's always really interesting to compare posts. So if we go into my last posts here, you can see a snapshot. The open rates are really interesting. This one I didn't email out because I was just replacing a broken link. Um, but you can see when things start to get more views than you have subscribers, it's because it's being shared somewhere and it's being shared probably multiple places. But sometimes it is being shared here over on the explore page. So this is recommended substacks to read. These will be algorithmic. The staff picks are picks that the staff have chosen that we might want to read. And then you've got your categories as well. So if you click into culture, this is going to be all of the different recommendations around culture and technology and all of the different categories there. You can just go along um, art and illustrations, my favorite to look at. So you can have a little look and see who's sharing where. This is a great way to meet new substackers, to meet new writers, to meet new creatives. But I suspect if you've had really high views, which I definitely have on a few of my posts, this is why. So I wanted to share that with you today. Um, if you're listening over in a podcast app, you're very welcome to head over to the Substack post that this podcast exists in and there'll be a video that you can have a little look at if you're unsure but head to the explore page on Substack have a look at your post stats and have a little look at how that all pans out for you um over some time you know give it a month give it three months have a little look see which ones are growing your Substack see which ones are staying small within your community and have a little think about what you want to do but that's about it from me. It's just a really short catch up podcast to say thank you so much for celebrating with me. Um, the bestseller thing does still feel epic. It hasn't really sunk in. It still feels really big, a really big responsibility and a really big thing. Um, it doesn't translate into thousands of pounds. I'm sure you've all done the maths. Um, you know, there are some really, really high paying sub stacks that people have in the world. Um, but a hundred is still a brilliant amount of people to be serving and showing up for. And I'm so, 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 so grateful um, for you all and for everybody that shares my work. I really am over the moon that I've hit this goal. It was a quiet goal. I never really spoke about it anywhere, but I've hit it now. And um, yeah, I just feel really, really happy that I've got some people to say, hey, you know, that thing called Substack that we all quite like. Um, it's really nice and um, it's nice to be able to sort of grow there and grow there together and share community together. So, yeah, I think I will leave you there. Um, if you've got any questions, other questions about growth or um, anything to do with what I've talked about in the podcast, either in this episode or another, do let me know. See you next time.